introduced in 2010, refreshed in 2019. The Fastback styling is definitely the most unique on the market, especially when you're comparing it to the rivals like Mercedes-Benz or your Genesis. Today, Audi of Tampa presents the 2022 Audi A7 Premium Plus 55 Quattro in your Mythos Black. More luxury styling cues for this sport back. We have the S-Line package, the Black Optic package, the Executive package, the Audi O-Rings. They're blacked out as well. Interior, you're going to have the luxury appointed, state-of-the-art technology. And that's what you're getting with this. When you compare it to the rivals, this one stands out a little bit more sporty, athletic, and you get all the luxury to back it. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and we're going to go over all the specs and details starting now. Athletic, classy, luxury styling that you get is going to start off with the S-Line package, which is going to make the sporty bumpers that integrates into Audi single frame grille black optic package. Going to black out every single thing. Because we got the black Audi rings, it's just going to make it more seamless as well. Quattro badging inside, and it all integrates into a sleek matrix LED headlamps in your daytime runnings that sit low, and it stretches wide at 75.1 inches and a height at 56 inches. Working down the lower part, you're going to have functional side curtains. You'll have that spoiler lip, but you still have ground clearance to go over any train that you need. And I mean, at the end of the day, it's a sport back, so that's what you want. The S-Line front fascia sits into the sloping hood which if you're comparing this against the genesis g80 that's going to be a more in your face this is going to be a more sporty athletic styling comparing it to the mercedes-benz e-class it's going to be more luxury again sportsback's going to take it over all those aerodynamic lines taper into these 20 inch five twin arm design wheels you have an optional 21 inch with the adaptive damping system as well the disc reading behind it is at 13.8 inches and the rear is at 13. Five link independent suspension, both the front and the rear will have your anti-roll bars and your coil springs. The S-Line trim badging comes into play. Black optic package as well with the side view mirror caps and everything blacked out on the side profile. You're gonna have the hidden fastback design. So you don't even know that this is a hatch the way it sits, unless you're coming to the rear. It's gonna look like a sedan, which is awesome because when you're comparing this, to that G80 or the E-Class, that's a sedan. This is gonna have more cargo space and it doesn't actually hurt the headroom. A length at 195.6 inches, which is not gonna be the smallest. That would be the Mercedes-Benz. The wheelbase at 115.2 inches. All those aerodynamic cues just set it apart and it goes into the retractable spoiler. Black Audi rings, dynamic LED tail lamps that say hello to you whenever you unlock the car. So you got the futuristic styling. Honestly, the LED lights, the design that they put in the front and the rear is the best of all of the vehicles. You can say it in the comments that you disagree, but they just do so much cool things. I mean, when you unlock or lock it, it literally does a pattern and it looks like it's saying hello to you or goodbye, which no vehicle is really doing. Audi stressing that. The S-Line is going to be on the lower bumper. You're going to get the grill inserts, hidden exhaust. You have dual exhaust tucked underneath. And the grill pattern, I do like it because it does have an offset to the rear bumper. 360 degree camera, reverse parking sensors, power lift gate to go inside to 24.9 cubic feet, which is going to be the best in class. You have a 12 volt with a spare tire. The rear bench split folds at a 40-20-40 split. At the end of the day, it's still a turbocharged. This is a V6. Let's start it up and hear that exhaust note.
the Sportback is going to definitely be the most practical for luxury, for sport, and the styling cues that you get is pretty much endless because on all four corners, when you get the S-Line, it's going to fix those bumpers, making it more sporty. Getting that block optic package just takes care of all the rest of the essence and the executive package. We'll talk more about that on the interior, but they back the performance with a 3.0 liter TFSI turbocharged V6, producing 335 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque that's paired to a seven-speed dual-clutch S-Tronic transmission, achieving 21 to 30 MPGs. Weight distribution at 53.9 to 46.1. Audi says the zero to 60 is at 5.2 seconds, but this is gonna to top the kick. Zero to 100 at 12.1 seconds. The base curve weight is over 4,300 pounds. The length of this car, getting those speeds with a quarter mile at 13.3, safety with the stopping at 70 to zero at 163 feet. Comparing it to Mercedes and the Genesis, this will not be the most in performance. When you compare it with the price point of what you get, you're gonna be getting the state-of-the-art technology, the interior is going to be more luxury, and the exterior is gonna be a little bit more flamboyant when you're comparing it against the two. Let me know in the comments what you think about the 2022 Audi A7 Premium Plus as we get into the interior, go over to tech and take this for our test run. Entering inside the Audi A7, you're gonna receive 37 inches of headroom, 41.3 inches of legroom. It's an Okapi brown leather with contrast stitching. They're heated, ventilated Audi seamless air vents that are underneath this tailored dash with the contrast stitching. I like that we have this silver that goes around the gauge cluster and around most of your settings and how they just keep those air vents where they're hidden with the wood inlays over the top, your quattro badging on the passenger side that is also an LED ambient lighting that goes into the door panels as well and in the center cluster here. Best part about all this seamless tailored work that we're getting is all the tech. This is state of the art now. This is a 10.1 MMI with your touchscreen navigation. So we have the pinch, we have the swipe, Click into your home button so you can see all the apps we have. Slide it over, click into your vehicle. Here you can change the dynamics of the way you drive the vehicle, which is also cool. You could also do it individual. So you can make everything as sport derived for your drive and your steering. Click back, you can also just do it on auto, comfort, or dynamic. For your air condition, it is a four zone climate control. You can do the rear here and adjust it on the lower 8.8 .8 inch screen or you can just have them all together with your heated steering wheel. Your ambient lighting, this has over 30 lights for the interior to contour to your mood or settings. You can also make it brighter. This will show you where all the light structures are. And you can also change the mood settings to that. You can do an individual, so you can do it the way you like the coloring profile. Your driver assistance, you can change this individually, which is really nice because you can change these settings to make them off or on which helps, especially when you're doing some dynamic driving. Put it into reverse, and we have the 360 degree camera with full trajectory. You can click onto the 3D. This is the cool part about Audis. And the best part is look how seamless it is. It is actually one of the most intuitive systems for 3D on the market, even by just doing it this way. You can just put it back here, and you have so many different camera positions that it's pretty much endless to make it easier for your reversing. Cup holders, you can easily fit a 16.9 ounce water bottle. I would say a 20 ounce is max. Another nice attribute about this, you're not gonna see a lot of plastic, only really on the cup holder area, and you have an area for your key fob next to that 12 volt. Open up inside here to some more storage, two USB-C ports. This does move forward and backwards. That ambient lighting is pretty much all over the front. It's not too in your face like Mercedes. I think it's just a good touch. Three spoke leather wrap steering wheel. It's multi-function. You got the gloss, you got the cross stitch, paddle shifters, and I like that they got this metal look that's here on the side to offset the steering wheel. Audi's virtual cockpit, you can zoom in and out of that navigation. You can also make it a bigger full screen for the navigation and you can change that to configure it to your liking. Audi also makes sure that they don't just leave anything unattended to. So because we don't have he the heads up display, it's covered up and it just makes a more flat dash. The door panel starts off with the Audi entrance, harder materials on the top. You get the ambient lighting, the wood, one touch up and down, memory for the driver. And the storage, 
I would say you can fit about four or five 16.9 ounce water bottles. To add to that sport back design, we have the power moon roof. But you know, fitting here in the front is never gonna be an issue but the back seat is where it's gonna be at. Let's see how I fit back there. Even with the fast back design, I'm at 37.1 inches, which is 0.1 inches more than the front, 37 inches of leg room, which is more than enough. I also like the fact that I have a good width to it because this car is a bit wider. So the interior space, they don't slack. They give you the amenities. Cup holders, you can easily fit 16.9 ounce water bottle. I'd say a 20 is max. Open up in here to a little bit of storage. The floor is not completely flat. Two USB-C ports, a 12 volt dual climate control, ventilated and heated rear seat storage behind both of the front seats with your air vents in the center and on the side pillars. All the seat belts light up as well, so it makes it easy for your safety. Door panel, gonna start off with some harder materials, but that's because we got the wood inlays. Storage, I would say you can fit at least two or three 16.9 ounce water bottles, one touch up and down. You got the ambient light and the contrast stitching. So storage doesn't really lack when you're comparing it against Mercedes or Genesis. I actually feel that the luxury and the sports styling that you get is pretty on point. Let's see how I look in the center. Sitting it to the center is not gonna be the greatest option. Headroom, I'm gonna be pretty much against it. Leg space, I do have it. I am blocking the central air vents, but the best part is they think about you because you got side air vents. You are blocking the USB ports too though, so it's gonna be kind of going underneath my legs. However, with the shoulder space, butt space, and feet space, we still have optimal space to fit three people my dimensions. Not for a long drive, because it's gonna really hurt my neck, but if you're under six foot, you shouldn't be too bad. And that's what I like about the A7. You got the luxury in the interior for the front and the rear, but you got the sport essence on the exterior, so it just makes the sport back something that is so much more special when you're comparing it to the rivals. Taking the 2022 Audi A7 out for our test run, 335 horsepower with 369 pound-feet of torque. That is pretty good out of this turbocharged six-cylinder because when you're comparing this for the price point, the luxury plus the performance that you get is definitely one of a kind and it's spot on. For the interior, it's going to be the most quiet of the three comparing it to Mercedes or Genesis. Genesis has upped their game quite a bit, but the new E-Class I felt had a little bit more interior noise than I was accustomed to from the prior generation but Audis are always library quiet. Put it in individual so that way we can make the steering sport, the ride sport, and see how well it really performs. As we did that, the steering has become a little bit more heavy, so I'm going to see if it changes when we put it back into the Comfort, and Comfort actually loosens it up dramatically. So I do like that the function, they work. It's not something that you just do it and you're like, ah, oh, it might do something. It's actually gonna, give you a more engaged drive and that's really what you want. Turn radius at a stop point is going to get about two lanes and here we go guys. Now the only disadvantage is because it's so quiet you don't hear the exhaust note in the interior of this model. That's something that kind of dislike, but it is a V6, so I'll let some of the stuff slide, and you still have over 300 horsepower. Smoothness in the ride, it's butter smooth. I mean, this is something that's going to go on a long journey without any issues. Safety, you have the frontal collision, you have the reverse assist as well, so if somebody's coming for the cross traffic, it will alert you. So you're pretty much taken care of, you got your blind spot monitoring. The fact that it's so quiet, it almost kind of confuses me that I'm in a sport back. That's one thing that I will say, I wish it was a little bit noisier just for the exhaust, but because Audi is going towards the electric world and they do a 48 volt hybrid technology in this one, I can understand what they're doing with it. As for the width, it doesn't feel overly wide. It does feel a little bit longer, especially the way the hood projects it, but that's a good thing because whenever you're driving this car, you actually don't feel that the back is as long as it is. The steering in the car is good as well. It's not as artificial when you change the mode. However, if you leave it into an auto or a comfort, it's going to be very soft-spoken. But I mean, everyday drive, it's awesome. If you need to give it some go, I mean, look at this. This is what I'm saying, like how much faster do you really need to go when you have your Audi? Comparing this to the Mercedes and the Genesis, 
I do like the styling cues of this one and the luxury that I get. There's no dual pane windows and it's quieter than the E-Class. Now there is three things I like and three things that I dislike. Is anything more than that? I'd be buying this vehicle. The three things that I like about it, luxury upon luxury, state-of-the-art technology. This is definitely a plus in my book. Price point, it's not gonna break the wallet too much if you're trying to get your feet super wet with more of an upscale executive styling. This is something to look at. The second thing that I like about it is it really does beat the rivals. When I'm comparing it to the E-Class, I like the E-Class and I like the way they change the whole thing. It's awesome, it's just, they change some of the attributes in which it's made a little bit louder in the cabin. It's not as soft materials unless you wanna get into a higher price grade. Almost a stop point, here we go. The last thing that I like about the vehicle is the technology that you get. It's very easy. Everything is all touch to arrive and you know when you're pushing it. On the flip side, three things that I dislike. It can get a little bit busy, especially when you're driving because you want to play with it. Maybe you're trying to use the bottom touch screen for your air condition or your driving mode select. When you do that, it can obviously distract you, so there is a lot of distractions in the front of the vehicle. The second thing that I dislike about the vehicle is the performance. It is the least when you're comparing it to Mercedes or Genesis, so it is something to take in consideration because of the upgraded price point. If you're looking for luxury, it does offset that amenity. The last thing that I dislike about the vehicle, again, it goes to the performance side, it's the exhaust note. When you start getting into a 70 or 80 grand car, you actually do want to hear that exhaust note unless you're going Tesla and you don't want to hear nothing on the exterior at all because it's a fully electric car. But because this has some performance behind it, zero to 60 in the low five seconds, according to Audi, I kind of want to hear that exhaust note and it just kind of takes away from that sports back heritage. But I mean, if you need to give it a little go, dual clutch transmission, like, instantaneously and that's exactly braking you can see you can pretty much stop on a dime and here we go but you get up speed pretty quick it does sound decent it's just you have to hit a higher note to really hear it and that's really something that's because i'm a petrol head at the end of the day but all around, Audis is definitely something that's going to be luxurious. Driving it on a long journey, you're not going to have any issues. Dynamics, it stays planted. I mean, you have all the sports, all the luxury, all backed with that V6 that has pretty decent, I mean, 369 pound-feet of torque. It does push you back. The seven-speed G-Tronic is a nice attribute too because you can get there a little bit quicker. I'd like to thank Audi Tampa for giving us this 2022 Audi A7 for our car review if you're already a subscriber. Thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, click that subscribe button, check out the details, the merchandise, the website, everything we do here at Hawkeye Rock.